Every year, sockeye salmon swim from the ocean back to their home rivers across BC in the Fraser River watershed. They support our culture, they're really important for the ecosystem, and they really demonstrate how everything in the ecosystem really is linked in freshwater, in ocean water, and even on land. One female sockeye from the Adams River lays over 4,000 eggs. Let's follow one of these eggs on her journey. The first few days of life are super vulnerable for our sockeye salmon. It's a defenseless egg at this point and is vulnerable to predators such as other fish and birds. Predators aren't the only threat to sockeye salmon in their early days of life. Things like bulldozing, logging, farming activities can wash things like chemicals and pesticides into the riverbed. Ideally, our sockeye salmon would have clean water and gravel, an undisturbed riverside, and a slow and steady current. As the sockeye continues to develop, the egg hatches into an alevin. This is a skinny little larval fish that has its food source attached to its body in the form of a yolk sac. It's a pretty unwieldy, big, fat belly, and it doesn't make it easy for the fish to swim around, but it does contain six weeks worth of food. Even though the alevin is now mobile and isn't a defenseless egg anymore, it's still vulnerable to things like habitat damage, wastewater, and predators like fish and birds. As the alevin becomes a fry, its body develops color and markings. Also, the yolk sac at this point has been absorbed. As a result of this, the fry wriggles out of the gravel and gets hungry looking for food. So she's going to swim downstream into Shushwap Lake and look for her favorite food, which is a zooplankton called Daphnia. In Shushwap Lake, the fry is still vulnerable to environmental conditions that if they change, could really affect the availability of food and oxygen and thus impact her survival. After a year in Shushwap Lake, the fry transforms into a silvery smolt. Smolts are at the stage where they're preparing themselves for a long journey to the Pacific Ocean, which is 400 kilometers away. So because of that, their body and behavior is going to have to change quite a bit in order to adapt to the ocean. It's kind of like a teenager where their body's going to get bigger and the behavior is going to lead them to group into other schools of sockeye salmon for mostly protection and safety. Our fish is super lucky at this stage because as a smolt, she has a lot of obstacles to go through. Things like dams and fish ladders, predators, um, human pollution, but she makes it through all those challenges and makes it to the open ocean. As an adult, the sockeye salmon spends the next couple years in the open ocean. We don't really know exactly where they go in the open ocean, but it's safe to say that they're trying to follow whichever food source that they have in front of them. But it's also still a dangerous time for her because there's a number of predators that are different this time. Killer whales, stellar sea lions, seals, sharks, as well as dolphins even. After about two years in the ocean, most of the sockeye salmon are ready to migrate home to spawn. But before they can do that, they have to get through their most formidable predator, which is us humans. Commercial fishers will use things like gill nets and seines. Recreational fishers use rod and reel. And indigenous people will be using traditional methods like fish weirs and fish wheels. When she's at the river's mouth, she encounters a number of different predators like lampreys, and inland there's grizzly bears and black bears. Additionally, there are physical obstacles that the sockeye salmon has to get through. Things like fish ladders, dams, waterfalls, and she needs a cooler water temperature under 18 degrees Celsius in order to make sure that she doesn't get overly exhausted when she's migrating back. After surviving all the threats and predators of freshwater and the open ocean, her salmon's lucky to survive and is ready to return home to spawn. Our sockeye salmon travels over 18 days and covers about 29 kilometers each day. She uses her sense of smell to help guide her and make sure she gets back to the Adams River to spawn. The migration back to the river is one of the most exhausting and challenging parts of the sockeye salmon's life. She becomes a brilliant red color, she stops eating, and she even stops healing from cuts and bruises. At the end of her life, our sockeye still has to navigate past predators, warm water, fishers, and dams. Out of 4,000 eggs, she's one of the two who makes it home. The salmon look so different as spawners than they did before, basically because they're showing off for this huge mating game. The color red is a really good indicator of the great health of a fish. The redder the fish, the more attractive they are to mates. Size is a great indicator of the health of a male as well, showing that he was strong enough to get enough food in the ocean. And they develop these hooked noses and humpbacks in order to fight for the females and fight with other males. When our sockeye salmon finally reaches Adams River, her belly is swollen with 4,000 eggs. 
She digs a nest with her body called a red. She then fills it with her eggs and a male follows her, fertilizing the eggs with milk. She then covers her eggs with gravel. At last, her long journey is over. Sakai salmon only spawn once in their lifetime. So after they finish spawning, they die pretty quickly. You know, this is actually a really good thing because the nutrients from these dead sockeye salmon go back into the ecosystem. The bodies of the sockeye salmon hold a lot of nutrients that help to nourish not only land animals, but also the forest and trees. But it doesn't end there because the eggs that she laid in her red are gonna go on to survive and go into the ocean and grow up and come back in another four years, just like she did. The life cycle continues. 